Yeah, Marshall, just, just before I start my questioning, did you uh, graduate from ADFA in 1989 or start at ADFA in 1989? Uh, Senator Wishwilson, um, Marshall Rob Chipman, Chief of Air Force, I started at ADFA in 1989. Okay. Oh, I graduated from there in 1988, so I was interested if you were there while I was there. Yeah. Um, about, about a year ago, um, I asked previous uh, Chief of Air Force Air Marshal Hupfield about um, a, the release of a US Defence Intelligence report or a preliminary report on UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. And I've just um, got some follow-up questions for you. Um, there's obviously been a lot happening in this space you know, in, in the last 12 months, and of course you've taken over the, taken over the role. Um, just, to, just to fill you in briefly, following the release of that preliminary assessment, um, by the office, the office director of national intelligence, there was a defence legislation amendment in December uh, in December of 2021 uh, that reported that required um, the Odney uh, organisation to report to Congress every year on any up, updates in relations to UAP. Uh, there was a series of congressional hearings in May this year, uh, and then. Uh, only, actually, only a few weeks ago, NASA set up uh, their UAP uh, study team or, or task force. And I was hoping by the time I got to ask you these questions, they may have released their first preliminary assessment to Congress, which was due last week, but we, we are waiting for that. Um, so with that kind of timeline, that rough timeline uh, it used as context, could I just ask you, since you've taken over as Chief of Air Force, um, in what capacity, if any at all, have you been uh, briefed on, on the UAP um, phenomena since, since you've taken over the role in July? Um, Senator, I haven't had any specific briefings in relation to UAP since I've taken over. Okay. Have you followed it on a personal level, just as a matter of interest? I do not follow it on a personal follow level. Follow it on no. a personal level? Okay. Um, could, at the uh, US congressional hearing on UAP back in May, um, the director the Deputy Director of Naval Intelligence, Scott Bray, confirmed that since the release of this preliminary report in 2021, they now had uh, 400 case reports they were considering, most of them were for pilots like yourself. Um, and he was quoted at those hearings as saying, the US had brought many allies and international partners into their discussions on UAPs. Given how close we are to the US, has there been any discussions with Australian Intelligence Services or the Air Force I'm in relation a, to their I'm approach to I'm not aware of any this. formal discussions that we've held with the US. So you're not aware? Um, is that means that you, it just hasn't come across your desk or...? Uh, I imagine it would have come across my desk any? if those discussions were held in the last four months, but I can take on notice and see if there's any other discussions that have been Great. held. Thank you. Um, I mean... I mean, being, being a pilot yourself, when our military aviators um, or defence personnel spot something they don't understand or can't identify in our airspace, um, what encouragement and reporting mechanisms are afforded to the men and women of the ADF in relation to that? Uh, Senator, we have a really strong reporting culture. If there's anything related to, to safety or, or airworthiness issues, then there, we strongly encourage our pilots to report those. There's also mechanisms through standard operational means, our air traffic, air traffic control, and also our air defence uh, personnel okay. who, who maintain constant surveillance of our airspace. So also back at the, uh, the, the, the congressional hearings on UAP in May, um, the same direct, uh, Deputy Director of Naval Intelligence stated, uh, Navy and uh, Air Force crews now have a step-by-step -step reporting procedure on UAPs uh, on their kneeboard in the cockpit and in their post-flight debrief procedures. Does that surprise you? We've seen no reason why we would institute those measures in Australia. Can you see a reason why they, or do you understand why they are implementing... No, Senator. But you have, you've had, is, it, is there a reason you haven't had a discussion with our chief ally about why they're implementing those procedures? And I was not aware of those procedures, Senator. OK. Um, I mean, as Chief of Air Force, would the establishment of a comparable reporting procedure be relatively straightforward to implement in Australia? 
I think so. If we saw the, the need, if there were the issues that we became aware of that affected our safety or security of our operations in our airspace, then yes, it would be a simple matter for us to implement those procedures. Yeah, and I see that in the context of our, obviously our strong alliance with the US, the US but our, the recently executed joint vision statement with the US Air Force. Um, I mean, would you be prepared to make a commitment to establishing comparable reporting procedures, or and what process would be required for that to but occur? Senator, perhaps before the Chief of Air Force answers you, Vice Admiral David Johnston, we have routine practices across all of our defence capabilities. If a operationally significant event occurs, including those that they might be able to explain or not, that, that there's a reporting practice, so it's not limited to uh, UAPs, but uh, of anything that they would uh, accrue, whether it's on a vessel or an aircraft uh, in the field who might see something, that there's an obligation to report those in. Right. So obviously um, incursions in defence training ranges by unidentified objects, uh, intrusions by unknown aircraft or objects would represent serious hazards to the safety uh, of flight and potential threats to security of our operations. Um, you've obviously got strategies in place to do that here. Um, are you aware of reports, I did raise this with uh, the previous Air Marshal as well, of uh, US military exercises being cancelled because of concerns around air safety and observations of UAPs? Is, is this a UFO question? You, it's, you could call them a UFO if you like, Senator really? Wong. They're, they're, called, they're now technically so just, classified just so as unclear. unidentified aerial phenomena. Or do you think do you think it's funny? Uh, I haven't been here for. Well, I don't think I've asked questions about this. And That's, okay. Well, That's right. well I'm not I sure am, we I am can. Asking. Can we assist at all, that Senator, with this this line of questioning? Senator, what I would say is I'm not aware of that. I am aware that there is reports due in the United States. If there is anything in that reporting mm. that raises anything that would be a concern to us in our airspace, then we'll take that seriously. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that. Well, perhaps the last question for me, and I'll, I'll put some other questions on notice. Um, I understand in, uh, in no 1996, the Air Force ceased handling reports on UAPs, uh, determined there was no scientific or compelling reason to continue to devote resources to that investigation. I mean, part of the reason these US structures have been set up is to provide an evidence-based or a data-based, uh, including NASA's involvement, in this, a data-based approach to can we eliminate this as a potential threat to national security? Are these uh, for, you know, uh, foreign, uh, foreign flying objects from, or are they from other places? Who knows? Um, on what basis did, are you aware of any, is there any documentation around the process that led the Air Force to uh, move away from devoting resources to investigating. There's no history of that, Senator. What I can say, though, is we have confidence in the reporting mechanisms that the Vice Chief mentioned before, so that if there were any issues that were uh, of concern to us, then they would be reported. But if there was new data, um, that would shift your determination to investigate this as a potential issue? If there are issues raised, Such Senator, as the US reports? If, if there are issues that we thought were relevant to the safety and security of operations in our airspace, then we'd be seriously concerned about it. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot.